Hey everyone, I'm going to show you guys a neat little math rock slash emo riff that I wrote and I want you guys to learn it too. So, here it is. Okay, let's move on to a little harmonic analysis to find out why this riff sounds the way it does. First things first, I should mention the riff is in the key of D and it's based off the 6-4 major scale pattern. If you don't know what that means, then please check out my video on the fundamental major scale patterns. So the 6-4 major scale pattern starts on the D note on the 6th string, and we start it with our pinky finger and it looks like this. So the entirety of the little lick that I played is written using this scale shape or pattern. Now, what can we actually say about the lick itself? Well, it sounds pretty melodic, and the reason it sounds melodic comes from the usage of large interval jumps, some well-placed major and minor seconds, and also an emphasis around a suspended second arpeggio. Starting with the explanation of the big intervals, we have a minor sixth interval, which happens right at the beginning. So when I go this interval right here, is a minor sixth sound, or F sharp to D. We get that tonality. The second big interval is a major seventh, which happens right at the end of the riff, and it sounds like that. In context, I play it like this. So as we can see, I jump to the major seventh, and then slide into the root note. Moving on to suspended second chords, these happen quite a lot, and the first one occurs in the first third of the line. So when I play, we can see here that this little lick here is a suspended second arpeggio. So as the riff moves on, I run down the scale and go, and once again, I repeat that suspended second little thing, and then I do a little trill to kind of like really drill that suspended second sound home. So yeah, because I play that suspended second arpeggio, or at least mention it so many times in the riff, I think that it really brings out that sound and it really makes it the core of the overall harmony for the line. And finally, I just want to mention that I think this riff has a nice little cadence or resolution at the end. And I believe this happens because, as I mentioned earlier, I jump at the end from the root to the major seventh, and then I slide into the into the root note. So this sounds nice based on the idea that when we play the leading tone of a key, which is the major seventh, or C sharp in the key of D major, the leading tone is always gonna naturally wanna rise. So in this case, rise into D. That's just a kind of natural thing that your ear wants to hear. So when I do that in context, we build the tension and then quickly release it, giving us this really nice little resolution. In terms of technique, I think this riff offers a lot for your legato technique. So it's got some nice string skips, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. So if you need to work on these things, then I recommend learning this little line as it's a good little workout and it'll train all of those little areas. So folks, there you have it. That's about all the analysis I have for this little line. I guess one thing I could add is that it makes for a great little outro to any piece. So with that being said, here it is one more time. Hey guys, I just want to thank you all for watching and mention that if you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you want to support the channel, then please consider checking out my Patreon page where for as little as a dollar a month, you guys will have access to some bonus content like guitar tabs, lesson notes, chord diagrams, and even some exercises. And if you want to know even more, or if you want some questions answered, or just want to study something one-on-one -on -one with me, then please consider hitting me up for a private Skype lesson. There's a link to my email address in the description below. As always, it's been fun, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.